Assalamu alaikum. Today I'll be sharing a really interesting topic with you. Before proceeding, I would like to introduce myself with those people who are landing for the first time on my channel. This is Nabil Sheikh, a corporate trainer, entrepreneur and investment banker. Welcome to my channel. Let's begin the show. In my last video, I highlighted the changing dynamics in banking sector. By 2030, I don't foresee any role of branch banking, which means tremendous disruption is expected down the line and all is possible with digital banking. Let me clarify one thing that digital banking is not mobile banking. Then what are digital banks? Digital banks are agile, digital and innovative competitors of a traditional banking system. They are gaining more and more popularity every year and have already taken taking over some verticals like payments and transfers. As I've already explained the difference between digital bank and traditional bank in first part of this video series, therefore today I'll be discussing difference between new bank and digital challenger bank. A new bank is a financial tech startup. It focuses on delivering excellent custom experience and acquiring as many clients as possible. Apart from money transfers, lending and payment options, these businesses also offer other banking services. Digital challenger bank are similar to traditional banking institutions in terms of their services but they typically do not require or have physical presence now i will be explaining differences between new bank and digital challenger banks number one regulations new bank is regulated as a bank challenger bank is not regulated as a bank number two business model new bank operates similar to tech startup challenger bank operates just like a bank number three main objectives for new bank to grow the user base for challenger bank to grow the balance sheet number four physical presence new bank are fully cloud based challenger bank have some sort of physical presence. Number five, licensing requirement. New banks do not require typical banking license to operate, but challenger banks need banking license to operate and offer full suite of services like traditional bank. Both new and digital challenger banks offer these set of services, payments, virtual debit card, loan, and mobile application. However, being unregulated entity, new bank cannot offer overdraft and deposit protection. Now we'll be discussing the rise of challenger banks and new banking. Every year, more and more fintechs start offering banking services to their clients. The overall number of challenger banks and digital-only banks is growing. As of 2020, there were more than 300 new banks launched worldwide. The new banking sector was projected to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 5% between 2019 and 2026, generating about $394 billion by 2026, according to Xeon Market Research. What makes new banks so attractive? Customers' frustration with traditional banks play right into the hands of new banks and challenger banks. People are fed up with hidden fee, ridiculous pricing policies, and not so user friendly financial processing solutions. If retail banks don't offer these matters, they can lose up to 16 billion in revenue, 344 billion in retail deposits and 11% of clients to rivals, including digital-only players. I will end this video by sharing few reasons of switching to digital-only bank. Number one, visiting the bank is inconvenient. Number two, you never go to the bank anyway. Number three, you hate paying for fees. Number four, you love getting better interest for your money. Number five, you love the feeling of security. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.